Last saya pergi rumah dia, saya tengok. Dia makan nasi dengan telur. Nama dia besar. Orang tahu piram dia siapa. Tapi hidup dia merahatkan. But Ramli was not one to wallow in self-pity, especially in the company of friends. He didn't bear grudges. Gila ya. Yo, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jumpa lagi dengan saya, Andy, di channel Andy TK. Bagaimana kabar kurang hari ini saya harap semuanya dalam keadaan sehat pastinya cuy ya Dan jangan lupa cuci tangan dan selalu jaga SOP cuy Dan ya sekarang saya mereaksi video ini itu tanggal 31 Agustus cuy ya 2021 Yang mana saya mereaksi video ini itu tengah malam Sekarang sudah jam 2 cuy Sudah jam 2 saya kasih lihat kepada kurang cuy ya Sekarang sudah jam berapa Ini Jam 2 cuy ya jam 2 tengah malam cuy makanya saya akan mereaksi video ini tuh nggak terlalu ribut gitu ya nggak terlalu bising ya apalagi di luar sana lagi hujan cuy ya lagi hujan dan mohon maaf banget kalau uh, apa namanya audio saya ini uh, mix saya ini gangguan gitu ya karena hujan gitu berpengaruh banget dengan audio gitu ya kalau hujan dan di tanggal 31 ini adalah hari kemerdekaan negara Malaysia cuy Hari kemerdekaan korang semua cuy ya Subscriber Indian dari Malaysia hari kemerdekaan korang semua cuy Saya juga turut berbahagia cuy ya Bagaimana korang juga memberikan saya ucapan Waktu tanggal 17 kemarin ya Dan giliran saya memberikan korang ucapan gitu ya Ucapan selamat hari kemerdekaan negara Malaysia yang ke-64 ya Benar nggak? Ke-64 kalau nggak salah cuy ini seperti itu cuy ya, kalau saya salah tolong dibenarkan cuy ya Dan spesial banget di tanggal 31 ini saya akan mereaksi video yang sudah lama banget saya ingin tonton cuy Sudah lama banget Yang mana saya akan mereaksi video Piramli yang mengisahkan tentang kisah yang sebenarnya gitu ya Mulai dia lahir sampai akhirnya dia meninggal cuy Setahu saya ya, setahu saya setelah uh, mengetahui jenjang karir oleh Piramli itu, saya mengetahui Piramli itu adalah penyanyi, pelakon, pelawak, komedian ya, uh, pengarah, pengarah film, dan pokoknya banyak lagi cuy ya kelebihan dari beliau dan saya spesialkan banget di video kali ini tuh karena Piramli adalah salah satu anak emas yang dipunyai oleh negara Malaysia cuy. Itu nggak bisa dipungkiri cuy Itu nggak bisa dipungkiri Apalagi ayah dari Piramli adalah orang Indonesia Jadi Indonesia, Malaysia Spesialkan banget di video kali ini cuy Di sini saya sudah dapat videonya cuy Sejarah Piramli Inggris ya Kayaknya di sini bahasa Inggris cuy Kalau saya agak kurang paham sikit Tolong dibenarkan cuy ya Karena, karena saya belum terlalu sangat paham gitu ya Soal bahasa Inggris cuy Maklum lah cuy ya Maklumi aja Ya sudah lama banget saya tunggu-tunggu video ini cuy Sudah lama banget saya ingin tahu bagaimana sih Piram yang sebenarnya cuy Yang mana Bagaimana sih uh, Kehidupan Nyata dari Awal Piram lahir Sampai Dia meninggalkan kita Di dunia ini cuy Oke okay? Dan tambah banyak cakap lagi cuy Jom kita tengok videonya Oke okay, cuy videonya udah siap ya seperti biasa cuy saya akan menggunakan ini supaya nampak jelas gitu ya terdengar jelas Karena ini kayaknya bahasa Inggris Mohon maaf banget sekali lagi cuy karena hujan ya bising gitu ya Dan seperti biasa kita hitung mundur lagi cuy 3, 2, 1 Mari mari CAD Mari mari CAD Mari kita berdendam Oke 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 Mahligai bahagiamu telah kuruntuhkan Darah bukan gadis Silam Ali Baba Bujang Lapo At the height of his career in the 50s and 60s P. Ramli was hailed oh, as Asia's Charlie Chaplin Oh ada ini ya, ada subtitlenya cik Dia bukan insan seni penyulap harta negara ia bekalkan pusaka lebih berharga, bermaruah bagi bangsanya. Because to me, Api Ramli is only my father. Oh, Tapi it belongs to everybody. Itu saja saya punya 
He acted in 66 films, directed 35 and wrote 33 of them, as well as having composed over 360 songs in his lifetime. Okay. Conquering every medium of the entertainment spectrum, P. Ramley had an infinite charm, laced with a healthy dose of humor, warmth and humility that endeared him to many. But his phenomenal rise from stage hand to screen sensation had ill prepared him for the downward spiral to rejection and obscurity. My own country, people that appreciate it. But after death, his popularity soared to incredible heights. Biography. <laughs> On the 29th of May, 1973, legendary Malaysian screen icon P. Ramli dies, broke and broken. Apa salah dia? Itu kataan yang cakap, dia cakap. Dia tanya saya, adakah people will remember me? Uh, kan? Saya tak boleh faham jiwa dia. Saya tak boleh buat apa waktu itu. His sudden death at age 44 is greeted with disbelief and shock around oh, Malaysia and throws the country into sadness and confusion. Banyak orang nangis. India, Kota Mayang, Kota Putih, Cina jual sayur. Saya tanya, kenapa orang nangis sampai ini macam? Ini orang banyak baiklah. Dia banyak tolong saya. Kenapa dia mati? Kenapa Tuan Allah ambil sama dia? Within hours, glowing tributes start to swamp the media. Tidak ada di Asia dan saya rasa tidak ada di dunia pun ya, yang saya kenal dalam uh, dunia perfilman. Tidak ada tokoh seperti Piram ini. But unwanted and unloved by his own people in the years up to his death, guilt begins to prick a nation's collective conscience. Wah, inilah dia gambar yang dia nak sunting. His films and songs had grossed millions of dollars and swept more than 30 awards Asia-wide. This <laughs> meninggalkan sesuatu hal razana yang suka untuk kita menidakkan. Mengapakah kau diciptakan Allah menjadi manusia? With regret coming in large doses, there is a clamor for his songs and movies and frenzied calls to have him properly honored and remembered. Memorials, roads and buildings are named in his honor and P. Ramli is posthumously awarded the Malaysian honorific title Tan a knighthood in stature. But for a growing number of voices within the entertainment community, it is too little, too late. Mungkin kalau dia masih hidup, dia dapat Tan Sri ini, saya bangga lah, saya kata. Tapi sekarang saya tak rasa apa lah. Cuma saya rasa sedih. Sesudahnya dia pergi, baru diagung-agungkan. Masa dia hidup, tak ada orang pedulikan dia. It's sad, but it's true. You want to be loved, you want to be famous, you have to die first. Revered as the greatest Malaysian entertainer of the last century, P. Ramli got his big break at the Shaw Studios on Jalan Ampas in Singapore in the 1940s. Known around Asia as the Warner Brothers of Malaysia, it was here that P. Ramli started working as a stagehand. 
Within a few years, P. Rumley was Shaw Studios' most successful movie maker, writing, directing, and starring in a series of box office hits. Ketika itu P. Rumley punya nama betul-betul tengah, penjulang tinggi lah. Orang datang cari dia tu tak berhenti-berhenti sampai dia bilang ram. Tahun ini bukan lu cari duit, duit datang cari lu. At the height of his career, P. Ramli was not only an idol of the entertainment scenes in Malaysia, but had a huge following overseas, most notably Singapore and Indonesia. No, okay, he was also okay, okay. a popular figure amongst the Japanese film fraternity. And in a period where Hindi movies ruled the Malaysian box office, Ramli's films rocked the status quo for the first time in decades. <laughs> Dia memang selalu dia nak selalu. meninggikan mutu kesenian bang, bangsa kita lah. Dia selalu, pahamnya kalau nak buat filem pun dia selalu nak bikin filem yang bercorak macam kemelayuan ya. Nah, kalau pun lagu pun gitu. The man whose films, music and charisma inspired and touched the hearts of millions seemed untouchable. But Ramli was more than just an actor. He was a man of vision. Knowing that color films were the way forward, making his first screen movie in color became an obsession for the next couple of years. Jadi orangnya advance tau eh, macam sepuluh dua puluh tahun dia beli tahu. In 1965, after completing his last successful film for the Shaw Studio Singapore, Ramli left to join Madeka Film Studio in Kuala Lumpur. For the next seven years, Ramli made 18 films with Madeka Studio, none of which had the box office success of his earlier films. Recording companies, which had profited so much from his sweat and tears, turned their backs on him. Ramli hanya ada kontrak di Singapura. Jadi saya pergi tanya Mr. Sbe untuk kontrak baru lah. Mr. Sbe, eh tak boleh. But even worse, his efforts to recapture his former glory were often ridiculed and vilified by the public and media. Ah, memang, memang pada masa itu memang piramid teruk kena. Apabila dia buat enam jah enam, lagi teruk dia kena. Petelagahan piramid itu ada dengan wartawan. Wartawan selalu kritik dia kan. P. Ramli's triumph and fame had once earned him an iconic status. In his final years, he tried desperately but failed to recapture his former glory. But in death, he became a timeless superstar. Born Tuku Zakaria Nyakpute in Penang Island on the 22nd of March 1929, P. Ramli rose from humble beginnings. His father, Tuku Nyakpute, was an Indonesian sailor from Aceh who migrated to Malaya. He settled in Penang when he married Che Ma Hussein, Ramli's mother. The letter P in P. Ramli stands for Pute, his father's name. He used this name in a singing competition when he was 17 years old and emerged champion. Believing it brought him luck, he decided to keep it. Educated in Penang, P. Ramli went to school as a teenager at the Penang Free School. What is it, Ramli School? Who is the best friend? But the school is the best friend. His faithful friend Sukadi remembers going everywhere with the irrepressible Ramli. Lalu di Penang selalu kami berdua ronda sana ronda sini. Basikal dia satu saja basikal saya tak nak basikal. Net dua. A cheeky daredevil teen, Ramli was always up to mischief wherever he went. Wonderful. Jadi apa yang ada pokok jambu, pokok kedondong, kah pokok apa kalau Ramli sampai saja, tiga itu putih putih semua dia angkat. Ramli main nakal, macam dia tu. Kami minyak di rumah macam saya tu meja panjang ni. Dia balik sekolah dia beli stand tu. Di sebelah sini sampai ujungnya. 
mak saya kata orang yang apa orang nak pergi jalanan ke tak ada apa dia turun dia start lagi cukup tiga kali start cukup <tuh> arwah punya hal saya sayang sungguh dekat dia Composer and musician Datuk Ahmad Nawab, who went to school with Ramli, recalls seeing him in a scuffle. Saya same school dengan dia, Francis Light School. Saya panggil dia budak keroncong. Mm. Saya selalu main bola itu. Saya tengok dia ada ada orang duduk bergaduh. Lah. Bergaduh, siapa pun pergi tengok, ramai orang keliling. Lah. Macam tengok boxing. Lah. Saya tengok Firambi ini bergaduh dengan satu, 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 orang, satu orang Cina. Tengah bertumbuk. Lah. Kalau tengok muka dia, ada kena pisau kat sini. Ada bekas pisau ni muka dia. Ah parut dia tapi bila dia dah gemuk ni kan, dah tak apa nampak lah waktu dia kurus tu dia nampak. Dia nak kalbang. But the way with teenagers destiny was changed by a simple twist of fate. Ramli was about 14 when the Japanese invaded and occupied Malaya from 1941 to 1945 during the Second World War. The Japanese left free movie tickets at post offices in the town centers to entice Malayan youths into their naval camps. It wasn't long before Ramli and Sukadi got hold of those tickets. To their disappointment, it was a Japanese propaganda movie. But that wasn't the only surprise in store for the mischievous teens. At the end of the movie, they were forced into a waiting truck and ended up as instant recruits of a Japanese naval college. It was this stint at the college that taught P. Ramli to speak fluent Japanese, play the violin, and later influence his disciplined work style. Malam-malam bila seminggu dua kali mesti rai atau mengajar lah. Lepas graduate saya pergi bahagian Jepun yang signal, signal bendera. Dia dia pasal pada drone dia masuk bahagian torpedo. Even while Japanese soldiers were committing atrocities outside their college walls, the two teenagers formed an attachment to the Japanese officers in the college who were good to them. Dengan di luar-luar saja lah Jepun yang kejam tu, macam sekolah kami tak ada. Jepun serenda dengar semasa dalam training, uh, malam lah kami dengar. Uh, dengar radio, jadi kami masuk store, Semua pedang-pedang Jepun saya dan Ramli ambil. Semua ni. Takut, takut semua ni lah. Takut dia orang Jepun arah kiri. Okey. Three years after the end of the Second World War, P. Ramli and Sukadi were spotted performing at an agricultural fair in Penang by B.S. Rajans, a director with the Shaw Studio. He invited oh, both of them to audition as musicians <coughs> at the studio and left oh, them two oh, train tickets to Singapore. The two friends, who had never been out of Penang, decided to accept the invitation and try their hand at show business. They set off for Singapore on the morning of the Eid Muslim festival that marks the end of the fasting month. P. Ramli remembered the excitement of celebrating Eid on a train for the first time. The train. The train. The train. The train. Hari yang mula-mula saya keluar dari Pulau Pinang menuju ke Singapura untuk bermain film adalah hari raya yang pertama dan pada hari itu saya merayakan hari raya yang itu sendiri di, di dalam kereta api. Wow. Jadi saya dapat melihat banyak negara, banyak negeri berhari raya dari Pulau Pinang terus ke Singapura. Dulu kereta api pun takkan tak tahu bahasa asapnya, pakai arangnya. Kau ada hitam-hitam cucu muka, dia pergi take kelas. Jadi kami turun-turun, cuci-cuci muka semua, barulah makan. But with little money, the two young hopefuls were living on excitement and adrenaline, not luxuries, as Sukadi vividly remembers about their accommodation. Bukan beli tempat tidur, beli store. So, selang dua hari kami pergi lah, segera test. Action! A week after their auditions, Sukadi, who was unsuccessful, returned home to Penang. But Ramli, okay. who was still hopeful of an acting offer, settled for odd jobs as clapperboy, stagehand, and later as playback singer. Ramli's patience finally paid off when, at age 19, he was given his first screen debut in a supporting role as the villain in the film Cinta. Okay, film pertama Cinta, ya. 
Former actor and crooner, the late Datuk Ahmad Daud, recalled watching the film with friends in Penang. Bila dia buka baju dalam gambar cerita, kita ni member bergelap. Macam apa? Bila dia angkat tangan tu, kita ni terlang, tang, 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 hmm. tulang, tulang kering punya kuat. Dengan dia punya tepat-tepat, pipi ya. tu, apa, <coughs> yang panggil macam tonjol ke depan tu, macam awak batu, kuat. Takkan bila dia nyanyi pula, kita nak tergelap. Ay, awak suara lain. Menyanyi sayang, jiwa mula. Datuk L. Krishnan was one of the few Indian directors hired by the Shaw studio. He gave P. Ramli his first lead role in a drama called Bhakti, much to the shock of the studio people. Okay, orang India Saya gunakan ternyata, ya. Ramli ba sebagai hero di dalam Bhakti, because he was a singer. So saya pun bilang sama Ramli, punya lagu-lagu semua jangan kasih hilang. Ramli's okay. screen impact was so impressive that after Bhakti, Krishnan went on to cast Ramli as the lead in three other films. Their immediate success made P. Ramli a hot property. He was a good actor. He can't even dance. So I told him, don't worry. I'll keep only up till here. You just walk. You know, walk to rhythm. Following his first screen test, Ramli befriended comedian Dying Harris, who had helped him in his early years. Ramli soon fell for Harris' daughter, Junaina. But Harris wanted Ramli to marry his older daughter, Junaida, a divorcee. Ramli, who hated confrontations, took the path of least resistance. In early 1950, he married Junaida. His only okay. biological son, Nasir, was born three years later. That same year, Ramli won Radio Malaya's Best Male Singer Award with his song, Aziza, making him a sought-after actor and singer. Aziza, composed before he became an actor, soon topped the charts and stayed there for over four weeks. Ramli rode on the song's massive popularity with every woman wanting to be Aziza. But the constant attention okay. from his legion of female fans took a toll on their marriage. The next year, Junaida decided she had had enough and left him, leaving Nasir in P. Ramli's care. Okay. Despite juggling a rapidly advancing career and looking after Nasir, P. Ramli always found time for other people as composer Kasim Masdur, a studio messenger boy at the time, remembers. Tiap-tiap pagi, saya mesti kejukan P. Ramli. Ketika dia mandi, favorite singer dia naik King Cole. Saya kena main tujuan kereme pun yang pakai pakai spring, pakai kunci. Eh? Yang banyak membimbing saya dalam uh, muzik ni ialah uh, Alayarham uh, Tan Sri P. Ramli. Dialah yang mengajar saya bagaimana nak tulis lagu dan bagaimana nak membaca not. Lama kelamaan uh, dia suruh saya tulis lagu yang dicipta. Dia lantik saya sebagai uh, uh, penolong pengarah muzik dia. To composer Ahmad Nawab, P. Ramli's extraordinary gift for music more than made up for his lack of formal musical training. Ini saya tengok dia pandainya dia boleh baca note without playing instrument. You can sing. Sekiranya lagu saya dinyanyi oleh P. Ramli, I can say that I'm barulah saya percaya diri saya komposer. Not long after his divorce from Junaida, P. Ramli was back on the dating scene. Beauty queen Mariani Ismail, who was Miss Singapore 1951, caught his eye. Kami selalu dating lah. Bila tak suti aja, dia akan jumpa saya. Bila dah jatuh cinta, dia bilang, saya nak kahwin sama you, dia bilang. Tapi saya tak mau you berlakon. Mariana, you nak nyanyi Mariana, boleh. Mariana saya ajar you nyanyi. P. Ramli had found the new love of his life. But by forbidding Mariani to become an actress, Ramli had unwittingly set the stage for his own heartbreak. Mariani was being seriously courted by the Shaw Studios, and someone else had a very special place in her heart. After his divorce from first wife Junaida, P. Ramley was convinced he had found love again with ex-Singapore beauty queen Mariani. But he didn't want his future wife to be an actress. 
P. Rumley was unaware that Mariani was being hotly pursued by film studios, including Shaw Studio, for a film career. And while Rumley was important to Mariani, she was not prepared to hurt her sister, Saloma, who on her return from Australia had fallen mm -hmm. hard for P. Rumley. Ramli dia very romantic. Orangnya suka peluk. Hmm. Saya tengok Saloma tengok macam terlalu admire. Mariani could not bear to watch her sister's infatuation. So she decided to sacrifice her own relationship and find a way to steer P Ramli into Saloma's arms. Oh. Dia nak cari okay. suami aku cari. Macam mana nak marahkan si P Ramli kan? Teringat yang dia tak kasih berlakon. Kebetulan uh, jalan nampas tengah sibuk kat saya. Saya kejap mata sign kontrak lima tahun. Saya pergi rumah Ramli. Saya cakap dengan Remy. Saya panggil dia Remy. Dia panggil saya Mary. Saya cakap Remy, saya dah sign kontrak tau. Saya nak jadi bintang filem. Perut mata dia sepet. Telinga dia merah. Oh, mau jadi bintang filem ya. Dia kata. Mariani was baffled at P. Ramley's lack of reaction, but she soon found out why. Dia pergi kat Mr. Quack. Itu baru punya bintang filem Mariam. Dia sign kontrak semalam kan? You jangan kasih masuk dia saya punya set. Dan saya tak mau berlakon sama dia. You jangan suggest saya berlakon dengan dia. Terus Mr. Quack jumpa saya. Mariam. Itu you punya nama sudah tukar ya, Mariani. Itu Piran ni tak mau berlakon sama you. Dia tak kasih you jangan pergi masuk set dia tau. Nanti dia terus tak mau syuting dia mogok nanti. Baiklah. Terus tak tegurlah. Selama tujuh tahun. Ramli's popularity as a charismatic actor and singer rose with each movie. Tahun, Ramli gained a reputation as a bit of a ladies man. In 1954, six years after he started working with Shaw as a stagehand, P. Ramli was performing before the Sultan and Queen of Perak, North Malaysia. Pleased with the show, the Sultan asked Norizan Muhammad Noor, one of his wives, to catch the show on the second night. Norizan confided in academic Professor Dr. Wan Hashim that the Sultan's orders came with a warning. Tapi dia beri amaran, Norizan, kamu jangan pandang matanya. Karena mata piramid itu magnetik, katanya. Uh. Ada besi berani. Takut jatuh cinta. Ada besi berani. Norizan pada waktu itu memang tidak begitu boleh minat dengan piramid. Tapi oleh kerana seperti arahan suaminya, dia pergi menonton. When Ramli was introduced to Norizan, there was instant chemistry between them. Permai suri berkenalan, terus jatuh cinta kepada piramid. Norizan became one of P. Ramli's biggest fans. Although the distance between Singapore and Perak kept them physically apart, it did not stop them from communicating over the telephone. But P. Ramli kept his distance, respecting Norizan's status as the Sultan's consul. Dan satu percintaan yang cukup sukar bersembunyi dan saya diberitahu oleh Norizan bagaimana tuanku mula tahu perhubungan mereka itu ialah kerana bil telefon itu tiba-tiba melonjak naik di luar kebiasaan di luar kebiasaan ini ada sesuatu their relationship continued to blossom however ramley was apprehensive about the huge potential for conflict in getting involved with someone of norizan's status but it never materialized tak ada gaduh-gaduh tak ada apa sebabnya apa yang don norizan bagi tahu sama saya memang sultan pun sayang dengan kedang ini P. Ramli and Norizan were married on February the 6th, 1955. And Ramli voluntarily stayed away from Perak until the Sultan's demise in 1962. News of Ramli's marriage to Norizan came as a big blow to Mariani, his former love. She had broken up with him in order to matchmake him with her sister Saloma. Terkejut saya. Aku dah berkorban gini, dia pergi kahwin dengan Norizan. Aku tak dia kahwin dengan Saloma. Bila dia kahwin dengan Norizan, Saloma merajuk lagi. Dia pergi Melbourne pula. Dia menyanyi lagi, jauh lagi. Bawa diri. Marriage to Norizan coincided with an exciting phase in P. Ramley's professional life. 
1956, P. Rumley played the title role in the historical film Hung Tour and wrote the music. He won the award for best musical score at the Asia Pacific Film Festival. It was the first international award for Ramley and Shaw, and Ramley dedicated one of the film's most popular songs to his new wife, Norizan. Mm -hmm. With Norizan, P. Ramley's appearance and lifestyle underwent a complete change. She wanted the palace decorum she was used to observed in the family home. Nasir, his son with his previous wife, eight years old at the time, remembers life with Norizan and his new adopted and step siblings. Okay. Bapa ayah makan kami kena disappear. Tadi dengar suara pun. Tunggu Norizan panggil. Caci, dia boleh caci. Caci, Norma, Betty, Sazali turun. Baru kan lebih turun. Tiga. Bilik empat empat bilik. Dia tak minggu tukar. Bapa ayah sudah masuk salah bilik. But it was during his marriage to Norizan that P. Ramley, the entertainer, was at his most prolific. Some say she was the muse for many of his greatest works. In 1955, 26-year-old P. Ramley wrote and acted in his directorial debut, Penarik Becha, okay. one of the most memorable films in the history of Malay cinema. It catapulted him into the ranks of more established directors. Featuring his enduring hit song Aziza, written ten years earlier, the film won five major awards, a result of P. Ramley's multifaceted skills on the set. They look at art, art of feeling. Like, why? Like, like this. They, they have many art. Lah, they have many ideas. I art. Like. Amran, macam gitu tau. Dia suka ajak. Orang kalau tak tahu macam Hindustan, tapi aku sedar. 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 Aku Seolah-olah macam beri Hindustan, rumah kocok, masuk air, dan nasi turun bawah. Itu semua kebanyakan beri Hindustan. Okay. But P. Ramli was not averse to rocking the status quo. And in his follow-up directorial work, Samira Padi, Ramli made a film oh, totally devoid of any trace of Indian films. Yeah. The film's success was a milestone for Malay films. <laughs> Ini dia aku sendiri oleh Shaw Brothers. Tidak ada satu filem yang boleh merosakkan filem Hindustan. Bilang di seorang lah di bilang yang yang merosakkan koleksi filem Hindustan. P. Ramley's third film, Pancha Delima, was the only one he directed but did not act in. The script was written by one of the Shaw Brothers. At the preview of the film, attended by Shaw Studios, mostly Indian directors, Run Run Shaw suddenly stopped the show. Rancu duduk depan tahan filem tu stop buka lampu semua preview room terang semua pengarah waktu tu ada dipanggil oleh Rancu termasuk Piramli. Jadi show brother marah show brother bilang you are director satu budak muda boleh buat filem yang baik kau yang telah banyak pengarah tak berani ambil filem tu. Shaw was furious with these more established directors' lack of confidence and reluctance to work on his script. But with Ramley's success, the Shaws provided more opportunities for new Malay directors to direct movies for the studio. The stinging rebuke from Shaw, however, had sowed the seeds of discontent amongst directors and actors. In 1957, P. Ramley walked away with a Best Actor award at the Tokyo oh, Fourth yeah, Asian Film Festival. <laughs> this time for his unforgettable performance in the tearjerker Anakku Sazali, where he played dual roles of a loving father and a rebellious son. Satu perbuatan Sadri, bapa yang bertanggungjawab. Oh, bapa mau mengusir Sadri keluar dari rumah ini ya? Bapa tahu. 
Actors, workers and studio staff turned out in full force at the airport to welcome P. Ramley home from the festival. But as P. Ramley's popularity soared to a new high, the silence of the press was deafening. P. Ramley sudah tak ada apa ni? news lagi tentang P. Ramley. Wartawan-wartawan sudah baikot kat dia. His new status as the Shaw's golden boy intensified the resentment of established actors and directors who had considerable influence on the press. But Ramley's career was just beginning and his critical and box office successes held out the promise of further cinematic brilliance. P. Ramley continued to enjoy spectacular success with each consecutive oh, film he was involved in. Suksesnya di sini sih, kejayaan dia di sini mungkin. But the stunning pace of his professional life left him very little time for his family. Norizan began to feel neglected. It was not the life she had envisaged when she gave up the palace for P. Ramley. Okay. But for P. Ramley, marriage to Norizan inspired such artistic brilliance that he was able to make 12 highly successful films. P. Ramley's success continued to be a thorn in the side of established directors, actors, and journalists who would use every opportunity to discredit him. Sebenarnya komplot ni daripada zaman awal lagi. Uh, abang belum pergi ke studio jalan pal lagi. Sebelum tu abang, bila abang pergi abang dah dengar cerita yang ada satu puak uh, menentang P. Ramley kerana Shaw memberi layanan macam anak emas kepada P. Ramley kan. Sade Bos kata, what he wants Give it to him. Jangan kata oh, ini, oh, ini tak boleh itu tak boleh. <coughs> oh, ini mahal lah itu mahal tak boleh. Dah tua banget itu. However, this special treatment was not extended to other actors or directors at Shaw Studio. Despite the backstabbing, Ramley once more stepped into new cinematic territory, writing and acting in his first comedic film. Hmm. Bujang Lapo is a film about three bumbling yeah, yeah. but good-hearted bachelors who were always on the lookout for love. Aimee Ja overheard Ramli telling friends about his new comedy. Jadi cara dia bercerita tu terasa macam dah tengok wayang. Karena P. Ramli bila bercerita dengan gerak mata, dengan gerak tangan, dengan nada suaranya sampai ke shot-shot semua dia bercerita. <laughs> Ramley knew he needed people who were naturally funny to co-star in his first comedy outing. So he picked and indulged comedians Aziz Sattar and S. Shamsuddin to provide rare gems of comic improvisation. Kau buat kau punya suka sendiri. Saya pun dah takut bila dia cakap gitu. Alamak ni dia dah marah. Jadi dia tengok tu. Ah, cuba rasa lagi sekali. Ah, cuba lagi sekali. Belum lagi dia. Belum lagi. Rasa lagi. Jadi apa yang dia dah tu tadi. Ah, itu yang terkucil tadi kau cakap tu. Ah, itu tu boleh. Hey, Ramli. Siapa kau? The film, when it was released, was an astounding success. Kingkong kepala hotan kau. Aku tengah ada belajar dari orang kau lebih tinggal. Dia mengarah sama sama. Dia boleh kontrol orang. Tak boleh gini, tak boleh. Tapi saya dengan sudut dia tak boleh kontrol. Apa yang saya buat masih diikutnya. Dan saya bangga satu, bila saya tengok bujang lapuk, tidak ada satu yang saya buat dia buang. Wah, itu menghargai banget sih. P. Ramli went on to create two more hugely successful sequels to Bujang Lapok. Fresh from the exceptional success of the Bujang Lapok trilogy, Ramli wrote and directed a parody of Alibaba and the Forty Thieves, based on the trilogy's characters. Certain lines from the show, some of them spontaneous improvisations, would go on to make cult status among Malaysian audiences. And although Ramli played the villain for the first time, the film still enjoyed outstanding box office success. New actress Sarima remembers Ramli teasing her on set. Oh, pasal pula pisau melekat belakang aku dah. Aduh. Dengan ketakutan kan bila masuk yang set ni hampir Timbo dia. Dia kata timbo tu saya pun tengok dia. 
nangis lah air mata keluar Dan kita datang saya only 17 kan Kita datanglah apa ni, arwah Sudah Maji ni Dia kata awak jangan begitu Ma. Dia kata dia tu bergurau Supaya awak hilang darah gemuruh nak syuting ni Tapi kita mana tahu kan hmm. <coughs> Ekstra lalu pun dia ambil berat Dia kalau berlakon Dia tidak mau dia satu orang bagus Rupanya cantik okay. Umurnya But Rumley may have crossed the line with his improvisations. It was almost banned by the censor board for improper depiction of the Arabic language and had to be redubbed with minimal Arabic accent. P. Rumley went on to win five more major international awards from 1958 to 1964, during which he made some of his most popular comedies. But as he became increasingly engulfed by his art, his personal life began to suffer. Cracks began to appear in his marriage and fights with Nariza and at home became more frequent. Hoping his problems would go away, P. Ramley quickly immersed himself in a new film that took a critical look at the prevailing social class systems in the country. Not for the first time, the film's theme song, composed and sung by P. Ramley, became a bigger hit than the film itself. And while the film was not a big box office draw, it received critical acclaim, validating Ramley as a maestro director. By now, everyone wanted to act in his films, no matter how small the part. Ready? Abang nak ambil kau berlakon dengan abang. Abang tu cium tangan dia, Terima kasih, Abang. Dan saya tak tanya berapa harga bayaran. Pasal saya hendakkan arahan bawa dia. Ya. Aku datang hendak memisahkan. Dia dah keluar dekat panggung. Oh, ini kan? Orang kenal saya siapa ke Soe Nata. Jadi, ialah guru saya. Ya, nak kenal sama saya. His unique directorial style often left a lasting impression on his cast and crew. Ramli direct teliti. Pakai part to part. Perasaan orang dah betul. Perasaan lambat pun tak apa. Dia boleh tunggu artis tu sampai satu hari, satu malam. Sampai dapat itu shot. While P. Ramley's career kept soaring, things at home were deteriorating. Norizan's discontentment with her own marriage made her sensitive to Ramley's working relationships, especially with his female co-stars. Mm. So when news reached home of Ramley and former love Mariani rehearsing songs together at the studio, Norizan flew into a rage. Nasir, who was eight at the time and living with P. Ramley and Norizan, remembered that day. Noriza ajak eh. Jadi dia ikut mami pergi rumah Mariani C. Kami duduk ada kereta dan turun. Mar, mar. P. Ramley had no idea that the former and current love of his life were about to confront each other for the first time. Tahu-tahu ada orang badan besar dekat pinggang tanpa saya. Saya cakar dia balik. Terus saya kali trespassing. Get out from my house. Mariani reported the matter to the police. Eventually, Norizan apologized in court. Mariani accepted, and the matter was quickly forgotten. But not by Saloma, who had just returned from her stint in Australia. She went after Norizan. Dekat studio lah. Saloma sudah datang birang lah. Oh, dia cakap putih lah. You slap my shit lah, never mind. But one day, I take your husband. <coughs> Saloma. By then, an accomplished and popular singer started performing at stage shows with P. Ramley. And not long after, she was auditioning and acting in P. Ramley's movies. Norizan, desperate to save her marriage, was driven to check up on her husband with the young Nasir in tow. This part, Jack. That P. P. Ramley punya spy lagi terror. Boss, dia datang boss. Oh, P. Ramley marah apa? Saloma, you acting apa ini, Cik? Ya, yeah, dia betul, dia. You acting apa? Mari, kita tengok. Okay. By 1960, the cracks in their marriage had deepened. 
Nasir remembered things getting stormy at home. The orang kalau bergaduh lebih dahsyat tau ni. Oh tumbuk bet keris keris semua. Nolita yang berani. Dia bergaduh lagi dia. Tapi cuma perlu diangkat. Ah, di sini depannya. Pengsan. The marriage was in serious trouble. Rumors of Norizan's friendship with a younger actor and Ramli's dalliances with his co-stars pushed the relationship to its limit. And after six years together, P. Ramli and Norizan divorced. Okay, we'll try. In one of her recorded interviews, Norizan, who left the palace for him, spoke of her frustrations with P. Ramli, whose art eclipsed everything else in his life, including her. She felt unloved. Jadi tak rasa diri kat Anu ni dia tak ada sayang benda kat Anu. Jadi dia kata Nurizat, I tak boleh cakap kat Anu. Dia kata, tapi kalau you nak bercerai juga, okey. Tapi I mesti sayang kat Anu sampai I. Yang mula dia lambat dan dia bersayang kat Anu. Dia kata, di masa tu kat Anu tak boleh nak. Tak boleh tak. Kan tak tahan yang dia buat kat Anu. Macam tu macam dia tak sayang. Tak kasih dengan kat Anu. Tak bersayang kat Anu. Kumpulan tu dia keluar daripada dia. P. Ramli himself never spoke of his troubled marriage to Norizan, who, unwilling to face her family, remained in Singapore after the divorce, before later moving to Kuala Lumpur. Mm. After an eight-year hiatus, Saloma was firmly back on the scene, this time making an impression on the twice-divorced, much idolized and newly available P. Ramley. Nasi, who was nine years old then, recalls Saloma coming to take him out one day. He did not take a liking to her and told his father so. Nasi suka tante itu. I dia mau. Sampai saya pernah tulis seribu kali itu. I must love my auntie. I must not have to live. Despite his son's resistance to Saloma, P. Ramli was set on marrying her. He confided in close friend Musalma, swearing her to secrecy. Dia tak pernah ada secret dengan saya. Tapi tentang Saloma, dia nak kahwin dengan Saloma ni, saya boleh terperanjat ni. But Ramli was insistent, asking Musalma to help him arrange a marriage ceremony. Boleh lah. Tapi ayat saya ingat dia main-main. Eh, saya bilang sama siapa tau, ni secret tau, saya nak kahwin dengan Saloma. Dan hmm. ayat tu jam pun ingat, mesti dia tembirangkan ayat juga pasal dia suka bergurau. Yeah. Dia bilang betul. Ramli and Saloma's marriage took everyone by surprise. <coughs> In one of his interviews, Ramli said that he married Saloma not for her voice or beauty, but because they were soulmates. For Saloma, there was a fine line between being his soulmate and living with his eccentricities. Mula-mula dulu saya pelik, baru-baru kahwin tak tak reti lah. Dia ni betul-betul ganjil lah. Saya belum pernah jumpa orang macam apa, macam dia. Dia kalau nak bikin lagu ni tak kira masa. Kadang-kadang dekat bilik mandi tu kan. Mak cakap dekat dalam bilik mandi dia duduk berjam-jam. Dia duduk fikir, fikir, fikir. Sampai saya pun nak takut. Pokoknya dia karang lagu lah, buat skrip lah. Nanti tangan dia macam tu, macam ni. Saloma embraced her married life with enthusiasm. As it turned out, she got on famously with Nasir. Masa dia orang gaduh, dia orang di Saloma gaduh. Dia orang dua gaduh, yang kaya saya. Siapa dia orang gaduh, dia orang tak tegur. Dia orang nak minta aku. Dia guna you lah. Benda saya. Cik, cakap dengan Mama, mana dia beri. Kau perantara, ya. Adi, apa saja? Seringgi. Adi ke Mama. Mama, ada mesej lah Mama. Hanti tak Mama tu. Saya kaya tau. I love her so much. Betul cakap, I love her so much. Saloma was involved in many of P. Ramley's successful films, but mostly in supporting roles. Where she had no acting role, they featured her exquisite voice. Singing was her first love, and that suited her husband well. Before long, they became the country's very own screen couple. Kasim Selamat. Siapa dia Kasim Selamat? Lawyer, 
Inspired by his newfound happiness with Saloma, P. Ramli wrote, directed, and acted in Ibu Mutuaku, one of his most highly acclaimed films. The film was not only a huge box office success, its theme songs surpassed the popularity of the film itself. Dengar lagu tu, oh nangis tu bang. Bes lah bang, lagunya menyayat hati. Mak cakap gini, dia bilang si mak, dia bilang, ini lagu, kau tengok dia bilang, kalau kita panjang umur, dia bilang gini, walaupun 30-40 tahun akan datang, dia bilang gini, orang masih kenang lagu-lagu ini. Betul banget ya, sampai sekarang pun cuy. But it was during another of the film's songs, Jeritan Batinku where Ramli played the saxophone that had audiences captivated across the country. Even though Ramli had mimed the part, he did it so well that to this day, many still believe that he was an accomplished saxophonist. First kali film dia, Ibu Matu Aku, dia main saxophone. Tapi banyak orang bilang dia yang main. Actually, bukan. He cannot play saxophone. Yang main dalam Ibu Matu Aku, Usok B. Okay. Tapi because Piramli is a... Manusia yang luar biasa sebab dia pegang piano kan dia pegang violin kan exactly lah like in play saxophone the key semua betul The film won him an award for a specially created category at the Tokyo 10th Asian Film Festival in 1963 the most versatile talent It was one of the highest recognitions yet for Malay cinema and with this win P Ramli's accomplishments as a filmmaker at the Shaw Studio were unparalleled. But on his return from the Tokyo festival, the reception mm, Ramli Tokyo. got at the <clears throat> airport was in stark contrast to his previous wins. His return this time was met only by three studio staff, Saloma and his personal assistant, Ramli Jr. He had come home to a highly charged situation between the studio and the union. The union's restriction of working hours had delayed the delivery of Ibu Mutuaku, forcing Ramli to pay for the crew's overtime claims from his own pocket. The meticulous director found it tough to meet Shaw's one picture every four months demand with limited shooting time and lack of script writers. <laughs> Dia nak sesuaikan background projector tu dengan orang tu kan, uh, manager tu semua. Especially when they close up tu, itu pakai lens yang paling bagus punya lens. Ah, uh, dia import lens tu, kan? Nah, dia tu tu dia jaga close up tu. Dia beli lens tu, dia suruh show beli lens tu. Kadang-kadang gambar dia bikin nak masuk festival enam bulan. Oh. Penalized for the union's actions, Ramli felt that his efforts and dedication were unappreciated. He began to get disenchanted with the studio. The lack of scriptwriters forced P. Ramli, like most directors, to adapt from other stories. But he gave the audience what they wanted with simple but clever plots. And Ramli is a very good man for Chedo, you know. One number one fellow, very clever, and nobody can see it. Even lagu also like that, but nobody will know him. What what he has done, mm. a wonderful chap, intelligent. Ramli created some of his best cinematic magic, and although he was far from content with the studio, the Shaws gladly continued to invest in him and gave him bigger budgets for bigger movies. Kau boleh tahu siapa yang gambar yang mahal. Saya tu saya cakap kau tahu. Dia ramli lah. Yeah, yeah. Especially dia best set. Kadang-kadang dia best set muka-muka dia kasi. Dua hari sudah habis boleh bikin satu set. Kadang-kadang tak ada. Lapan hari, sepuluh hari mau bikin dia best satu set. Terrible at handling his own money, Ramli asked Quack to deal with his finances and trusted him implicitly. Tak kena saya masuk ke bank. Tak ada nak apa-apa saya keluar kasi sama dia. Hei Ramli, kau tak? Engkau kasih sama saya simpan ni duit, kau tak hitung. Apa, Mr. Kuih ni cakap macam budak-budak lah. 
Saya cakap sama kita itu macam Dia kata Mr. Kui kalau mau pakai adik Ya saya pernah baca namanya Mr. Kui Apa namanya, apa namanya? Di film-film sebagian film ha, macam Itu je dia tak tak betul <coughs> macam ni Tak tahu apa saya tak tahu Teman-teman mau tanya dia According to Quack They worked crazy hours to complete Ramley's films quickly Because they were guaranteed hits Kalau saya tak okey Bukan main bagus lagi dia main gambar Duit masuk pun main macam Kau tak nak Habis kalau dia nak apa sikit lebih kurang kau tak boleh kasih? Hmm. Tak boleh lah. Saya, saya kalau tak kasih sama dia, saya rasa... Huh. Continued success with his comedic films culminated in P. Ramley winning his next and last international award for the film entitled Madu oh, Tiga. Madu Tiga. Penghargaan selanjutnya itu. In 1963, Shaw offered P. Ramley the chance to direct his first color film entitled Seniwati in Hong Kong. He was also to direct his fifth sequel of the renowned Bujang Lapok comedic series there. P. Ramley was ecstatic, but the excitement was short-lived. Without telling Ramley, the powerful union demanded higher payments and allowances for Ramley and his co-stars, forcing Shaw to cancel the production of both films. Ramley was bitterly disappointed. It was a time when Singapore was facing heightened left-wing radical trade union activities and strikes at the Shaw Studios were attracting the state's attention. Bila Perdana Menteri apa ni di Kuala Lumpur dapat tahu about union ni jadi dia tak suka Melayu-Melayu ni buat union. So dia bilang dengan Shaw Brothers, you better close down. So Shaw Brothers kata dia, you better go to Madika Film. Disillusioned, P. Ramley moved to Merdeka Studio in 1964 after directing his last film, Tiger Abdul. He skipped the film's preview and saw it during its Kuala Lumpur run in the cinemas. Shaw studio manager Kwek Chip Jian had his own theory as to why P. Ramley left the Shaw studio in Singapore. Okay. Kita biar orang tak suruh dia pergi, dia tak pergi sebenarnya. Kau tahu yang panggil sama dia siapa? Itu dia, itu Tauke panggil dia sana. Kasih punya orang tu. Nama dia Ho Alo. Dia cakap sama P. Ramli, apa kau nak? <laughs> What do you think of that? Apa kau nak? Madeka Studio was owned by Ho Alo and businessman H.M. Shah and managed by the Shaw family. P. Ramli's absence was greatly felt at the Shaw Studios in Singapore. To his friends, P. Ramley was like a bright star that shone on them. He helped to launch the careers of many. His departure left a deep void in their lives. Saya ini seolah seolah olah macam anak ayam kehilangan ibu. Paksa saya struggle sendiri lah. Kalau tidak ada P. Ramley, tak ada lah kasih masdu. Kalau dia sitting, saya cukup hormat dia director. He is a very good actor, very good actor. Dia kalau ada dekat sini semua happy lah. Dia nanti cakap macam-macam dia menyanyi macam gila ya tu. Shooting pun senang lah dia orang semua suka. Bila dia tak ada senyum, senyap saja. <laughs> the Shores however did not completely sever their ties with P Ramley. They later acquired a significant stake in Madeka Studio. Dia begini, dia kat Kuala Lumpur ni peralatan studio Barangnya tak cukup. Barangnya barang lama. Barang yang tak habis yang Singapura dah tak boleh pakai baru dibawa ke Lumpur. Okay. Macam kamera, lighting apa. Kedua, orangnya orang belum mahir. Macam di Singapura orang dah mahir. Semua dah 10 tahun kerja. Kat sini semua orang baru. P. Ramley had thrived under the system at Shaw Studio. Backed by a highly experienced production team, he could concentrate wholly on the creative aspects of his work. But the state of things at Madeka Studio was very different. Tucked away beside a zoo with outdated equipment and inexperienced production staff, Ramley joked with friends that he was working in a zoo and was about to be eaten alive by a tiger. Ironically, Sitora Harimau Jadian, or Sitora the Were Tiger, became the title of his first movie at Merdeka Studio. 
He tried dabbling in special effects, but with a small budget and poor support services, he had to multitask, even doing his own editing. Enggak, enggak ada di YouTube bisa lihat ini film. At the film's preview in Singapore, attended by actors Ahmad Daud and Sadia, the Shaw brothers walked out after only 15 minutes. Saya kita sendiri itu itu darshan dengan jerk editing jerk kejap dia buat diri jadi Frankenstein. Ramli would never again replicate the spectacular success he achieved at the Shaw Studio. Dia orang janji macam-macam nak kasih dia buat color film, nak buat canggih-canggih lah sinemaskop. Tapi bila dia sampai sini, tak ditepatkan janji. Dia dah kecewa. Jadi dia punya uh, creation bila bikin film dah tak gairah macam di jalan nampas. The advent of television, Hollywood, Hong Kong and color Hindi films sounded the death knell of P. Ramley's attempt to reinvent himself. P. Ramley directed and acted in 18 more films for Madeka Studio until 1970, including the popular Do Re Mi trilogy. Okay. The comedic series was meant to recreate his popular Bujang Lapok characters. But it failed to capture their innocence and lovable ineptitude. Laksmana Do Re Mi oh, was the last film P. Ramli directed for Madeka Studios. Sama... At home, P. Ramli lived ya? happily with Saloma and their five adopted children. His only biological son, Nasir, had married and left home at 19. Ramli realized that however dedicated he was to his work, he needed the emotional anchoring that only his family could provide. They meant the world to him. Dia sayang betul anak-anak dia. Dia suka pijak baring, dia terlalu apa, tiadak ke sini. Nanti anak-anak dia dipanggil lah pijak lah, yang Sazali yang picit lah, hmm. yang Sabarudin tu kan pijak, jajah, pijak. Dengan saya-saya sekali pijak dia. His son Sazali was his biggest fan. Oh tak ada macam ikutnya lelaki luar biasa. Tengoklah anak dia sendiri pun tak ada ikut jejak dia. Daddy saya dia segak handsome. Saya tak handsome. Ramli liked to pamper his children, but he would be very strict when it came to music and schoolwork. Dia kalau ajar dengan anak dia memang serius. Baik kira-kira pelajaran sekolah mahu pemuzik dia tak boleh main-main dia boleh dah fokus dia pujuk saya balik ya. P Ramli tried to teach Nasir and Sazali to play the piano, but quick-tempered Ramli would get really annoyed when they played badly. He would thump them both, but according to Nasir, it was him who usually got it worse. Jadi masa air lah, bapa air bergeram air kena. Tapi kalau orang buat hal air yang kena. Satu hari saya tengok saya pergi rumah dia dia tengah pukul Nasir Pasal rambut panjang Dulu Nasir rambut panjang Dan saya sampai dia stop Dia tak dia pukul Nasir Despite Ramli's domestic upheavals Ahmad Nawa, Ramli's long time friend Was privy to the star's other eccentricities Dia punya favorite tu Timikai Timikai dengan kecap and then they throw uh, chili cream. Okay, and they chicha. Every time they come, they call. They say, "Mak, I go to home. Ah, so I prepare it, lah." And then they make favorite uh, gunting rambut. Yang jadi mangsa aja nasi lah. Then the gunting, macam mana patient? At home, when Ramli felt like eating a particular cuisine, he would call up Mariani, his sister-in-law, who he was once in love with. Ramli ni dia uh, dia very lebih cinta yang tak tersampai ni uh, selalu mak kerja teruk di rumah macam masa-masa ya. sibuk-sibuk semua dia ada kan orang gaji dia tidak selalu mak sentiasa make up aja cantik duduk buat tatting buat laboci gitu aja uh, dia tak suka macam selalu mak kerja-kerja yang kena dera saya lah nah bila nak masak lauk yang kesukaan dia saya kena datang lah masakkan dia. Kalau mau duduk dan diam tanti aja, ah gitu itu dia punya perangai. Si Ramli punya perangai. Pampering Saloma was Ramli's way of showing his love for her and keeping his family together. 
This was important to Ramley, who felt that he had already lost one family, his friends at Shaw Studio in Singapore, whom he still missed dearly. In 1967, after three consecutive box office flops since Ramley's departure, Shaw Studio on Jalan Ampas ceased production for good. It was the era of the swinging 60s and the world invasion of rock, soul, pop, reggae and blues music. The Bee Gees, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles and the Supremes all became household names, displacing P. Ramley's brand of music okay. and singing style. And while local pop singers struggled to compete with the new musical craze, P. Ramley remained true to his music. The consequences were disastrous. Piramli pernah kena bu di stage di Dewan Bahasa Pusaka. Waktu tu malam tiga Ramli, Piramli, E Ramli, E Ramli. Saya akan bermain. Jadi bila Piramli nak keluar nyanyi, semua orang bu. Saya tengok waktu pok di stadium penyanyi Singapura dengan Malaysia. Bila penyanyi Malaysia keluar, mesti orang bu. Jadi orang tak suka waktu tu. But these incidents only served to strengthen Ramley's resolve to promote the preservation of traditional Malay music. Lagu-lagu macam lagu joget, orkes-orkes combo, lagu-lagu asli, gazal dan undang-undang yang tidak pernah di dipertandingkan atau ditunjukkan. Kalau lagu-lagu ini tidak diberi galakkan. Maka nusaya lagi 10-20 tahun akan datang, lagu ini akan dilupa terus. Dan muzik-muzik dari barat, mereka akan mewakili diri kita. Tidak tahu sekarang, mungkin sudah ada. Sudah sesuai dengan omongan macam ini. Dan dikenang, bila dipahamkan, itulah saya. By this time, P. Ramli's son Nasir was making his own way in the music industry. But Ramley was disappointed at what he saw as Nasir's lack of music and acting skills. It was a sensitive subject that often left them on non-speaking terms. Nasir lamented having to live up to public expectations of him as oh, P. Ramley's son whenever he performed. I am beban satu je. Bila ada show, orang panggil saya menyanyi, orang mesti compare. Oh, tak macam bapak dia pun. Mm. What should I sing in style? I bukan nak ikut Ramley. P. Ramley made it clear he had no interest in Nasir's brand of music. But Nasir caught him hiding behind a pillar at the Merlin Hotel to watch him play one night. As their love-hate relationship continued, P. Ramley felt his son slipping further away from him. Dia dengan Nasir ni kurang sikit, kurang rapat. Tidak duduk, cerita apa, tak ada. Dia yang rapat betul Zazali. Ha, termasuk bila datang si Zazaloma, dia rapat dengan Zazaloma. Bila datang Sabarudin, dia rapat dengan Sabarudin. Sebab-sebabnya saya tak tahu kamu kenal lah mengikut cerita Kasma Buti. Junaidah ni tinggal nasib begitu aja. Dia tinggal begitu aja dengan Piramdi. Siapa Piramdi nak syuting? Tak ada orang nak jaga. Yang jaga ni lepas tu baru diantar ke Penang. Jadi tidak apa tak bersama. Sebenarnya nasib sama bapa dia pun ada clash. Clash pasal kahwin aja. Tapi ini cerita tak boleh kata terangkan lah. Nasir was not the only relationship Ramli held dear. Tapi kebanyakan bagi Nasir kalau anak pertama. In 1968, Ramli's long-time recording company EMI decided not to renew his contract when it ended. It was a big shock to P. Ramli. Zewan kata dia, I don't think saya tak ingat EMI want to do your recording sebab EMI lagu dah tak tak laku lagi dah. And then he may avoid for orang tak terima. So waktu tu saya tengok muka dia merah dah. I feel so upset. Tengok, Piramli make so much money for EMI. Then he dia boleh cakap begitu. 
P. Ramley swore he would never again work with EMI under any circumstances. It was the ingratitude that stung him more than the rejection. Ramley concentrated on his films, doing everything he could to reach out to his audience. He introduced significant changes to his themes and portrayed multiracial settings in Sesuda Subo and Gerimis, but the audience was not moved. Then he tried a Hitchcock style thriller oh, in Dr. Rushdie really really and even a raunchy theme in Gelora, Gelora, but the audience was too besotted with foreign movies to notice. Rejected for his singing, acting and directing, Ramley's humiliation was complete. With one fell swoop, his status had changed from idol to fallen star. Bila Syo Wingok tunjuk kepada P. Ramli surat itu, kontrak P. Ramli tidak boleh disambung lagi. Sign oleh Jaafar Abdullah. Jaafar Abdullah, a Shaw organization executive, also said in the letter that P. Ramli was a has-been and his movies were no longer selling. Ada satu kawan abang masuk kerja di Shaw Brother dapat foto stack dan surat tu abang dapat baca. Memang surat tu betul macam nak membunuh P. Ramli. P. Ramli ni filem sentiasa laku. Bila dia nak apa kecilkan dia kata lah macam-macam kan. Ha. Shaw lah yang start ni. 1972 to 73 were Ramley's darkest days, with hardly any acting, directing, composing, or singing jobs offered to him. He was desperate to find the means to support his family. P. Ramley sang at weddings with Saloma, acted as compere for stage shows, and became a judge for acting competitions to make ends meet. Nasir did not realize how broke his father was. Saya pun kadang-kadang jumpa dia, jumpa dia, dia tak pernah bilang yang dia susah apa, dia act normal kan, jadi saya tak tahu nak predict macam mana dia. Dia tak pernah cerita dia punya kesusahan, macam mana susah dia pun dia. Dia, dia pendam ke, ini P. Ramli. Yet Ramli's critics were relentless. There was very little sympathy for him. The Ramley skeptics among the journalists were almost gloating in their review of his fall from grace. P. Ramley memang kecewa dengan wartawan. <laughs> kecewa dengan wartawan. Dengan saya, saya, saya sendiri pun kadang-kadang saya nak jumpa dia pun susah. Dia malah nak jumpa wartawan. Kan? Tapi bila ada satu pengkat tu dia ada dalam studio tu. Dia tengah mengubah lagu, mencipta lagu kan. Tapi bila saya masuk dengan wartawan tu, dia cakap dia lari. Dia tak nak jumpa. But P. Ramley was fortunate to have found a friend, fan and benefactor in businessman Dato H. M. Shah. They set up a Malaysian film enterprise called Perfima. The plan was for P. Ramley to direct his long-awaited colour film. They brought in five more members into Perfima. The company brought new hope to P. Ramley. He had dreamed of setting up P. Ramley Film Productions, his own film company, to rival the Shaw Studio one day. But Ramley was in for another disappointment. Bila bangunan tu dah siap, hari pertama, P. Ramli dengan Cemcah diberhentikan, dikeluarkan daripada Perfima. The majority of Perfima decided that its first colour film project would not be directed by P. Ramley, but a younger director, Jin Shamsuddin, who had just completed a film course in London. Ramley felt totally dejected and defeated. Mana perfuma jadi? Kalau kita ada dalam tu, ha, insya Allah jadi. Kalau ada kita ada pengalaman, ada duit, macam tu orang tak ada apa pun. Pengalaman aja. Pengalaman tak ada duit tak jadi. P. Ramley was at the lowest point in his career. Putting food on the table for his family was a daily struggle. He was forced to do whatever he could to earn a living. Pasal masa tu dia sudah buat kedai warung untuk main maju. So he is living on the pendapatan dan maju punya, you know, table money. So makin lama makin turun. Yes, 
Ramley was embarrassed when his childhood friend Sukadi found him at the Mahjong store. He tried to hide his embarrassment by showing his annoyance with Sukadi. Dia marah dekat dia, tegur juga dekat dia. Jadi dia pun marah juga dekat saya lah pasal saya tak duduk sebelah dia. Dia kalau kita jumpa kena duduk dia, dakap dia, cerita dalam setengah jam, lari tak apa. Ni pasal saya nak pergi meeting dengan uniform pula, mana boleh duduk kedai macam. Ha. To help his boss, his long-time personal assistant Ramley Jr. approached a small recording company. Fu Chokwan tulis cek seribu bagi Ramley. Buat empat lagu. Ramley wrote the songs and Saloma's sister Mimi Loma recorded them as Saloma was still contracted to EMI. But P. Ramley was eager to produce his first color film and tried to obtain a bank loan to finance it. But he was rejected at every turn. Habis tu, ha, semua apa dia buat, dia boleh minta. Bantuan semua tak dapat tau. Padahal working paper dia very good tau. Bank tak percaya. Sampai di bank je. Dengar, pasal, yelah, P. Ramli tu jam dah jatuh. Siapa nak percaya lagi? Siapa nak bagi duit kan buat? Dia dah no good already. Semua orang boleh tolong dia. Banyak orang boleh tolong dia. Kerajaan boleh tolong dia. Dia biasa menghadap ini orang, ini orang, semua kira macam tepis, tepis, tepis. And even the TV and radio stations had nothing to offer him. Waktu itu saya ke JRTM Orchestra itu jam 17 tahun. Saloma dapat program. Jadi dia teman Saloma ni pergi menyanyi tapi dia tunggu kat kantin. Ah, you see how, how sad P. Ramli met life waktu itu. Tapi he's a singer. He's a tenor. Dia boleh dapat satu program. P. Ramli show ke apa. Nobody cares. P. Ramli may have had few friends left who cared. But in the bleakness of it all, he found a beacon of hope. P. Ramley struggled to put the pain of his disappointments behind him. But his friend and benefactor, H. M. Shah, continued to support him. They set up another company called Rumpun Malayu. Ramley, assisted by Ramley Jr., concentrated on the company's cinema renovation project and acquiring films for screening by Rumpun Malayu. They operated from an office at Shah Motel owned by H. M. Shah. But it was a visibly depressed P. Ramley who made what was to be his last trip to Singapore for the Asia Pacific Film Festival in 1973. Okay. As usual, he put on a happy face visiting old friends and sharing precious moments with them. His film, Laxmana Do Re Mi, was nominated for the festival. Mm. But the reception he got was a far cry from his golden years when he was the toast of the festival. P. Ramley Tak ada satu orang pun bangun mempelawa atau membawa piramdi duduk dekat delegat Malaysia. Kemudian dia nampak saya, dia terus duduk belakang saya kat Singapore delegat. While P Ramley was ignored by local film participants, those from overseas were queuing up to meet him. Yang pada pelakon-pelakon luar negeri ni tak ada jumpa pelakon-pelakon kita lah. Siapa saya nak jumpa? Tapi semua orang cari P Ramley. Hong Kong nya lah Indonesia bin selamat pun cari peramli juga. Orang luar menghargai dia. At the moment, socializing with the delegates who had sought him out. For a while, he looked like the old Ramley who was friendly with everyone and loved to chat. When he called on old friends from the Shaw Studio days, they noticed he was depressed, wondering if people had forgotten or just disliked him. Setuju jawab Ram. Jangan kata mereka. Biar berjuta lagi manusia tak sayang sama lu pun tak apa. Asal Allah sayang sama lu cukup dalam. Datuk jawab, Abang, you will be remembered forever, forever, forever. Ya, dia kata, orang dah tak peduli saya. Saya punya karya pun orang dah tak suka saya. Saya dah tua lah, saya dah tua lah, dia cakap. Saya hendak filem lagi ni akan apa, cantik lagi, maju lagi macam luar negeri tapi saya tak sempat cita-cita saya tak sampai saya kecewa dia cakap 
For actor Aziz Sattar, to whom P. Ramley was a mentor and successful movie icon, Ramley's aura of dejection felt strange. But he was shocked to see Ramley's true financial situation in Kuala Lumpur. Hidup dia melarat lah, kesian. Last saya pergi rumah dia, saya tengok. Dia makan hasil dengan telur. Nama dia besar. Orang tahu Piram dia siapa. Tapi hidup dia melarat lah. But Ramli was not one to wallow in self-pity, especially in the company of friends. He didn't bear grudges. Tapi Ramli ni saya tahu dia nombor satu dia tak pernah condemn ini pelakon pelakon lain ini tak pernah cerita pelakon pelakon lain iri hati semua tak ada. Dia dia suka happy ya. And then he like to cerita yang lucu lucu lah. Ramli's friends say they could sit all night having coffee with him at the food store, enjoying his self-deprecating humor and stories about his life. But they all agree on P. Ramli's one exasperating trait. He couldn't say no to anyone asking for help. It became his own undoing. If he has money, say that the money is 200 in the house. One day, people come. People say, Mr. I'm hurting, I want to go back to the village. Mak saya sakit, tak ada duit, iya kah? Semua dia kasih. Gila, dermawan juga. Selalu orang tercegak. Selalu orang cakap, saya ada hari itu. Selalu orang cakap, eh, Daddy, kenapa Daddy kasih semua? Kan ini hari hari minggu, mana ada bank? Dulu mana ada ATM kan? Tak apa, itu rezeki dia. Saya tak apa. Allah ya Rami, dia tak boleh tengok orang susah. Orang putak belik dengan dia. He was also generous in his professional life. Even when he was already a big name, he willingly shared top billing with his co-stars, often reviving other people's flagging careers. It was actress Sarima who was discovered and nurtured by Ramli ten years earlier that still believed in his talents and asked him to direct her new film. Sehari sebelum dia meninggal tu. Saya, arwah suami saya, kita ada dekat Shah Motel. Dan memang nak tawar dia, saya dah lupa apa, apa tajuknya cerita itu. Dan memang dia setuju. The offer from Sarima and her husband filled P. Ramli with a new optimism. But P. Ramli was never again to set foot on a film set. Before dawn on the 29th of May, 1973, P. Ramli had a heart attack at home. Saloma accompanied him in the ambulance to the Kuala Lumpur hospital. Their son, Sazali, waited at home with the younger children. A few hours later, Sazali received the dreaded call from Saloma. He refused to believe her at first. Betul, Mama dah suruh doktor dah tiga kali pam dah, dia punya dada dah. Doktor cakap meninggal. Habis kita pun dapat tahu, orang gaji dengan adik-adik saya, menangis lah. Cezali, who was 15 then, recalls his father's last words to him just before the heart attack. Jaga mama baik-baik. Dia kata, jaga adik-adik lelok. Jangan tinggal mama, apa sekalipun terjadi. Kalau kecuali mama dah tak ada lagi, kau nak pergi, pergilah. Tapi pergi dengan cara baik. Sri Ramli, a great man and a true genius, had died far before his time. He was the original hero of the Malay film world. His brilliance and kindness an inspiration to many. The news of P. Ramley's death at the age of 44 was met with disbelief. Saya lemah bila dengar dia meninggal. Lemah tenaga dia. Air mata ni bercucu. Belakang saya cakap ni kalau... Gila... Saloma. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Nanti jam belum ada lagi orang ramai Saya tengok dia Tapi mayat dia saya tengok betul-betul dia senyum tu. When his first son Nasir heard the news He wasn't sure how to react He couldn't believe it at first Tapi bila saya tengok mayat dia atas imen itu baru saya pun Datang doktor mula tolak mata dia Tolak hidung yang mana doktor saya marah dia orang pun Tak apa nak Nak bedah pun tak bagi bedah No no living one piece dia kata Nasir said Saloma was in a daze throughout the funeral. She acted as if everything was normal. Dia cinta sejati. Sebelum dia meninggal, dia cakap dengan saya, Ya, aku nak mati dah. Aku nak hidup lagi. Apa kau cakap ni? Buat apa aku nak hidup? Daddy dah tak ada. Dia kata, kau tolonglah bila aku dah mati nanti, kau kuburkan aku kat sebelah dia. Saloma was quoted in the newspapers as saying after P. Ramley's death, even if I were to die and somehow live again, I would never find a husband as good as P. Ramley. When Saloma died almost 10 years after P. Ramley, Mariani kept her promise to her sister. She made sure they were together, side by side, in their final resting place. Tiba-tiba dia bersuara kat saya, Haji, kalau gua mati, gua akan hidup seribu tahun lagi. The sudden death of P. Ramley, the greatest star of the Malay entertainment world at the age of 44, came as a complete shock to Malaysians. For close friends, his death had only just begun to sink in. They started to recall how oddly he had behaved before he died. Jadi saya lagi ni datang jumpa saya. Asal, dia maki rumah. Dia balik ke rumah sial. Nak balik makan nasi tak ada. Nasi yang sebenarnya selama saya duduk rumah pilihan di tak pernah tak ada. Pada itu hari tak ada nasi. Dia selalu baik dengan saya bila saya datang. Hari itu saya datang nak jenguk Saloma. Dia rampas Melissa umur enam bulan. Dia bawa pergi belakang. Dia tak nak cakap dengan saya. Malam itu dia meninggal. Ramli's son Nasir believed he had a premonition of his father's death. I dah habis kerja. I balik rumah. Dalam pukul empat lebih, I, macam orang tumbuk perut saya ini, saya cakap, kerana Allah tak bohong, eh? macam orang tumbuk perut saya tau. Saya terus bangun tau. Alamak, apa pasal ini? Macam waktu itu, saya tidur balik. Pagi itu, polis datang ketuk pintu. Ramli's close friends attributed his heart attack to the anxiety of a recent court summons. Yang dia meninggal ni pun pasal dia terkejut. Dia jamin satu hamba Allah. Jadi besok yang tu ada kes lah. Waktu dia belum meninggal, tiga empat hari saya jumpa dia lah. Dia, dia kena pikot kan. Ada dia kena saman kan. Uh, janggut yang ada. Dia susah hati. Piramli ni, yang saya tahu, dia takut doktor. Dia tak pernah pergi doktor. Hmm. Yang satu, dia takut orang saman dia. On the day of the funeral, Ramli Jr., his long time personal assistant, was worried. Sebab itu, waktu dia meninggal, Saya susah hati. Saya cakap salam mak kak macam mana ni kak nak ke bumi kak. Saya takut tak ada orang. Saya takut tak ada orang. Pasal waktu itu memang tak ada kawan. Tak ada lah siapa datang rumah dia tanya. Memang dia susah betul. Hari itu memang tak ada. Hari dia meninggal memang tak ada duit. Termasuk salam mak pun tak ada. Tak, tak ada duit. HM Shah. Bantu semua HM Shah. HM Shah bagi RM3,000 pada salam mak. Hundreds of people thronged the house, mosque and burial grounds to pay their last respects to P. Ramley. On the 29th of May, 1973, in the burial grounds in Kuala Lumpur, the world said goodbye to P. Ramley for the last time.
Today, the memory of P. Ramley is fiercely and loyally protected by a nation that can't quite forgive itself for the way he was treated and will not tolerate any criticism. <laughs> When it came out that neither Ramli nor any Malaysian owned the rights to his films, many were emotionally crushed. His films could not be screened locally without permission from the owners, the Shaw organization. While others continued to profit from his films, P. Ramley's family was completely left out. Concerned organizations in the Malaysian entertainment industry helped his family gain copyrights to some of his songs. This is the only legacy of P. Ramley that belongs to them. According to Nasir, his father had planned to use the royalties from his songs to perform the Hajj to Makkah. Did I plan? <laughs> but by the time the royalties came through, Ramley had passed away. To P. Ramley's legion of loyal fans, brand P. Ramley is very much alive beyond the realm of copyright. Ramley composed over 390 songs in his lifetime. His music recognized all around the world. In more recent years, younger generations of Malaysian singers have re-recorded P. Ramley's songs with varying success. Cuba dia nyanyikan orang tu ya. Saya sendiri pun bila sampaikan lagu oleh Tansi Allah ya Ham Tansi Piramli ni, rasanya sampai menusuk ke dalam jiwa lah kalau kita menyanyi. To his loyal fans, however, Ramley breathed a certain life into his songs, stirring the heart of anyone listening to them. Sebenarnya lagu-lagu itu tak boleh dimodern kan? Sebab lagu itu dah itulah asal dia, dia punya dia punya itulah karakter Hafiz Ramley. Katalah Mona Lisa punya painting, dia cuba nak buat tambah kala. That's a work of the people you must respect. P. Ramley had no formal education in music, yet he rose to become one of the greatest musicians in the country. He wanted music to be taught from an early stage in Malaysian schools, so the passion and love for traditional music would be inspired from young and never forgotten. Untuk dia tidak cerita juga. Kalau kita tidak semai kan music-music. Tradisional asli ini ke dalam dada anak-anak kita, anak muda kita. Usia hari satu hari, musik lain akan mengambil tempat. Karena di dalam dada mereka itu kosong, tidak ada apa-apa. Semua juga macam kita mengajar anak kita pergi belajar agama. Walau bagaimana pun dia pergi berapa tinggi pun dia jarang tidak menukar agama. Karena agama yang sudah diajar di bapanya sudah tersimpan dalam dada dia. Itu juga musik supaya musik lain tak boleh memperoleh jiwa. Cinematically. Ramley is most fondly remembered for his portrayal of the innocent, downtrodden hero or the charming, mischievous playboy, his own wicked sense of humor often permeating his films. His last film, Laxmana Do Re Mi, was a spoof of his own losing battle for viewership. It was probably the lowest budget film he ever made, but he and his co-stars had the time of their lives doing the spoof. Zam Zam Thank <laughs> you. 
Ramley's influence on Malay popular culture today remains unstoppable. Even in death, his magic finds its way into the hearts of successive generations of Malaysians. Banyak yang kita boleh pelajari ya eh, daripada karya-karya beliau dan kenapa dia masih boleh ada entertainment value yang sangat tinggi segi-segi dialog dia yang tidak pernah waste tak pernah wasted kita pasti dengar ingat segar dengan kita Without Piramli Malaysia would be very different I think he set very high standards for all of us can your song be as good as a Piramli song can your movie be as good as a Piramli movie <coughs> Decades later, there is still no substitute for Malaysia's charismatic genius. Semua dia bikin sendiri. Bikin skrip, mengarah, berlakon, cipta lagu, editing. Saya tak fikir kita dapat lagi satu piramli lah. Memang tak ada orang teruk banding, tak ada orang boleh ganti tempat dia. Tak ada orang boleh ganti tempat dia. Zaman sekarang, mau ngerjain semua yang cik, kayaknya mustahak isi. Udah selesai ya Oke okay, cuy Itulah tadi Aduh Gila Sedih banget cuy <laughs> Saya istirahat Tadi setelah nonton video ini Saya istirahat dulu cuy ya Saya Berhentikan dulu v, Apa namanya videonya cuy Saya istirahat sejenak gitu ya Saya harus benar-benar fokus gitu ya Dan Hari ini Saya baru mengetahui Yang sebenarnya Dari kisah piramli cuy Gila Sedih banget Kenapa di akhir hayat beliau Di akhir hayat beliau itu Dia nggak punya apa-apa gitu ya Cita-cita beliau ingin membuat Film yang berwarna itu nggak dikabulkan sampai Dia meninggal cuy Gila banget Oh my god Gila sedih banget sih cuy Gue gak tahan banget Oh gila Saya kayak berlebihan banget tadi nangisnya cuy Aduh Saya gak tahu mau cakap apa lagi cuy Saya gak tahu mau cakap apa, apa lagi gitu ya Saya gak nyangka aja Akhir hidup beliau itu seperti ini cuy Saya gak nyangka aja Akhir hidup beliau seperti itu cuy Gila Kenapa orang spesial seperti ini Harus menderita di saat Akhir-akhir hayatnya cuy Kenapa coba <laughs> Saya kayak mimpi gitu ya Saya kayak baru nyadar gitu ya Gila benar-benar kisah yang sangat oh my god mulai dari dia nakal um, pertama dia uh, penyanyi ya penyanyi lebih ke vokal awalnya berlakon dan yang membuat namanya atau mendapatkan penghargaan banyak itu dari segi komedi ya film-film arahan arah, arahan piramli yang komedi dan <laughs> bagaimana dia nggak dihargai di negara sendiri dan dihargai oleh negara lain dan di akhir hayatnya itu gila banget cuy dia nggak ada uang sama sekali cuy dia nggak ada uang sama sekali dan dia nggak mau merepotkan orang lain dan yang saya pegang teguh dari beliau adalah dermawan banget gila aduh ah, mungkin itu aja cuy ya mungkin itu aja cuy <laughs> saya nggak saya nggak tahu mau ngomong apa ini cuy Jujur aja cuy, jujur aja kayak saya kayak ini cuy, kayak kecewa gitu ya, kecewa banget. Kenapa seniman macam ini diperlakukan seperti itu di masa itu cuy. Oke dan mungkin itu aja cuy ya, uh, saya udah nggak terlalu fokus ini cuy. Saat, saatnya saya pamit undur diri dan sekali lagi saya mengucapkan selamat hari kemerdekaan buat negara Malaysia. Semoga senantiasa selalu berjaya dan selalu melahirkan orang-orang. Yang bisa meneruskan karir beliau, ya karir beliau cuy. Saya berharap lebih ke situ sih cuy, karena saya memang mencintai seni. Jadi saya berharapnya ke situ sih cuy ya. Dan terima kasih buat korang yang selalu support NDTK dan saya Andy. Thank you next, thank you next dan thank you next. Bye.